collimating your SCT or SMIT cassegrain. So before we get started, there's a few things you're going to want to know. That is, be aware that if your telescope is still under warranty, that you should not modify your scope at all. So you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver or maybe a Allen wrench to make your adjustments to your SCT. Another thing that you're going to need, which is optional, is, is an artificial star. Take in mind that you can use a real star. However, if it's not tracking, it can be a hassle. Anyways, I'm going to be replacing the scope uh, set screws with Bob's knobs. Now, this is going to throw my collimation off by a lot, and that's the reason why I need the artificial star to do the uh, collimation with. If you are going to be using an artificial star, you want to set your scope of roughly a thousand feet away. However, I think you could get away with about 300 feet, depending on the focal length of your telescope. 5SE, I think roughly 300 feet away is good enough. So this is the front of my next star, 5SE by Celestra on the Smith Caster Green. You can see there, there are three screws and a triangle-like uh, pattern. I'm going to need to replace all these, however, you don't have to do this, replacing the screws or Allen keys if you're not replacing them with Bob's knobs. I've gone ahead and replaced two of my stock Phillips screws on my 5SE. Now take in mind, you don't have to do this if you're not going to be replacing the screws or Allen uh, screws with Bob's knobs, but if you are going to replace the screws or Allen key screws, uh, take in mind you're going to want to remove each Phillips screw one at a time and replace each screw with one of Bob's knobs. And you have to do that before you take out another screw. So what we're trying to achieve with the collimation is the star to look like you see here on the screen. It is basically um, out of focus. We want to defocus. That's right, defocus, which means make the star out of focus so that it looks like this. Now, if the star is looking like you see right here, then this means that your collimation is bad. You're going to need to use the adjustment screws, which are either the Phillips or the Allen type screws if, or whatever other screws they are. And you're going to have to adjust them one at a time and make small changes until you get it right. Now I'm going to share some final thoughts with you that you should know um, before you actually start doing this because I didn't want to go into a whole rant until the end of the video. So if you care to hear those, feel free to hear me out on those. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about them right now. So before you even start to do this collimation process, as I said, if your telescope is under warranty, do not try to perform collimation on it. If your telescope is out of warranty, you need to be really careful when you do your collimation. You're going to want to make sure that the scope is tilted down. That means the optical tube. Because the last thing that you want to do is that when you're adjusting or removing screws for Bob's knobs mainly, if you loosen too many of them, you could run the risk of having the mirror fall and that would not be good. Having that small mirror in the front fall onto the bigger mirror in the back will damage your optics and you don't want to have that happen. This is why it's really important if you remove the stock screws and replace them with Bob's knobs that you remove one screw followed by replacing it with one of Bob's knobs. That's something you should know just in case because I almost made a mistake and almost lost my back mirror because I didn't know that the small mirror in the front was... Uh, basically free to fall backwards so it's really important that you you do that um another thing is too 
I was told by Celestron to use either a 2.5 millimeter eyepiece. However, I use a four millimeter eyepiece and I was able to get the right uh, results. So I think because the picture I showed of the um, yellowish donut shape, which was a de defocused star, uh, the one after it was basically a star that was a bad collimation. But the first picture that I showed of the star that was out of focus, that's the type of um, appearance that we're looking for. I couldn't think of the word, sorry. That's the kind of, that's what we're looking to achieve. Now, another thing you should know too is, is don't use your diagonal. However, with other SAT telescopes made by a different manufacturer, you may have a, a little bit different or a lot different than a Celestron uh, type telescopes. By the way, like I said, this is not for the faint of heart. If you're worried about destroying your optics, you better, you're, you're better off taking it to somebody that knows what they're doing. Maybe a local astronomy club and uh, have them have a look at it. However, if your scope is, is under warranty, then you just send it back to the manufacturer. Um, probably cost you a fee to ship it both ways and maybe something else. If you're outside of the U.S., I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but for people in the U.S., you should hopefully uh, be able to get the company to recollimate it for you. Anyways, that's basically um, all I can think of right now. Um, I've gone ahead and put a link in the description below. It's a short Amazon link. It contains a affiliate link. I'm not going to hide that. I make a small penny off of you buying this artificial star should you want to call me your SCT. I need to mention too before I end this video that you do not need to do this with refractors. With Newtonians, um, I don't know anything about Newtonians sadly so I can't give you advice with that. However, the Smith Castle Green which is like the 5SE 6SE, 4SE, CPCs, etc. from Celestron. Those are Smith Castle Greens. I think Mead as well makes Smith Castle Greens. But the Newtonians and the Dobsonians, this collimation is a little bit different from those. So I don't have one of those anymore. So I can't do a video on that. So I apologize. But like I said, this was my attempt to do um, a video. Uh, demonstrating how to do this. It's basically for my reference. But anyways, if you found this video helpful, feel free to hit the like button. Hit the dislike button if you didn't like it. You can feel free to check me out at Instagram for some of my astrophotography pictures as well as my website in the description below. Clear skies.